let's say you are a ticketed passenger. You hopped on the train, and you expect your journey to be somewhat smooth and uneventful. While the conductors are responsible to collect your tickets, when it comes to operating the train, the one person that holds more authority over a journey is the commander of the train, the engineer. We trust that engineers have received the proper and appropriate training to get to our destination safely and somewhat on time. Even if trains are running behind schedule, we still trust that engineers will get to our destination safely. When it comes to mechanical issues on locomotive, unwilling passengers, faulty signals, etc., etc., those things are beyond the engineers' control. However, there have been some incidents when disasters or accidents were caused by engineer error. Perhaps one of the most Shocking and outrageous incidents would occur at Chatsworth, California, nearby Los Angeles, when a Metrolink train collided head-on with a UP local train due to the Metrolink engineer doing something that should never happen in the first place, but it did. This is the story of the 2008 Chatsworth train collision. One of the most deadliest train accidents to have ever occurred in the United States, and the worst in Metrolink's history. Friday, September 12, 2008. A two man crew consisting of an engineer and a conductor was taking a Metro Link set out of a yard in Matava, California, and making preparations for that set to run as train 106 and 111 later today. The train consists of three multi level coaches and F 59PH A55. The train soon departs the yard at 6 45 a.m running as train 106, making 10 station stops before reaching its final destination, the Los Angeles Union Station.
In command of train 106 and 111 later today was 46-year-old Robert M. Sanchez. He started his railroading career in 1988 while working for Amtrak as an engineer. He then was hired by Connex Railroad in 2005, before working for Mitchell Link as, once again, as engineer. While he was enjoying his time working for the railroad, the same couldn't be said about his records. In December 2005, he failed to show up to report for duty at his assigned job. In December 2006, he failed to report that his conductor was late for the job assignments. Between August and December 2006, he was absent several times just 12 months previously. He was also held responsible for delaying his train 119 at the Mall Park Station on August 19, 2008. And if that wasn't enough, in 2002 he was arrested for shoplifting at a video game store. And Amtrak decided to keep Sanchez on the job, who was later hired by Cornex and Metrolink years later, like nothing had ever happened. It was also reported that he was on his phone while he was on duty, not once, but twice. We'll definitely get back to our cell phone topic later. Train 106 soon arrives at the Los Angeles Union Station uneventfully at 8.25 a.m. Disembarked, and the crew soon took the train at the Metrolink Central Maintenance Facility and went off duty at 9.26 a.m. It would be the afternoon run that would soon be a fatal trip. Further up the line, a Union Pacific leased Del Loco had just completed his work at Oxnard, California, and the train was now ready to head eastbound back to Jamco, with two locomotives and 17 cars, with UPSC 70 Aces 8485 and 8491. And on board were a crew of three, an engineer, a conductor, and a lead locomotive, and a brakeman, a second locomotive. Unfortunately, the train would never make it back to Jemco.
Metro Link crew soon went back on duty at 2 p.m. They picked up the train at the central maintenance facility and made their way back towards Los Angeles Union Station. As normal, upon arriving at the station, the crew did a brake test and the passengers were getting on board. And get this, while the train was at a standstill at Los Angeles, Engineer Sanchez emailed Warner Rail fans with a plan to board a train at Moore Park. And I'm not kidding when I say that this rail fan wants to ride in a cab, not in a passenger car. And this was the text message that this rail fan messaged back to the engineer. In fact, this one's not the first time that this happened. Just seven days prior to the accident, the engineer or rail fan A, or person A as the investigation will call it, one out of three rail fans, was having a conversation about when will this rail fan drive the train, and the engineer will only handle the radios and not the controls. Surprisingly enough, on September 10th, it was shockingly reported that rail fan A was in the cab of a locomotive and touching the controls. Although in my knowledge, it was unclear to me if the rail fan was driving the train or the train was parked. And on the morning of September 10th, the engineer had another conversation, this time with another rail fan. Rail fan B, or person B, as an investigation would call it. This time setting up a plan for a cab tour. This habit of the engineer texting rail fans was about to play a critical role later. Train 111 soon leaves the Los Angeles Union Station at 3.45 p.m. towards Moore Park Station with over 200 passengers ready to head home. nothing out of the ordinary. The crew of the Union Pacific train were looking forward for their day to end so they could relax for the rest of the night. And of course, same thing with the Metrolink crew, and the passengers were looking forward to head back to their homes. However, as minutes go by, they had no idea what they were in for.
before 11 p.m. Train 111 departs CP Lamo, while the UP train enters a single track at CP Davis, which you will note was the very same track 111 was still on. The collision was set in motion. was approaching C.P. Burnson, approaching a flashing yellow, meaning that prepare to slow down. Engineer Sanchez acknowledges that signal and calls that signal out on the radio. However, the Metrolink conductor did not repeat that same message back to the engineer. At mile post 4451, the train encounters a solid yellow signal, an approach Slow down and prepare to stop at the next signal. But Engineer Sanchez never acknowledges the signal and never reports that signal on the radio. Was he on the phone at that time? Cause after all, that is possible. But the train eventually slows down and stops at the Chas Wolf station. Now, here's where things get confusing. While 111 was almost ready to go, the conductor told the investigators that he couldn't help but notice a green signal up ahead, and stated that he announced on the radio to the engineer and I quote, Highball 111 on a green signal. However, that couldn't be true. According to eyewitnesses, the signal was not green, it was red. When the conductor called out that signal on the radio, one, it was never acknowledged by the engineer, and two, when investigators were listening to the recordings, their announcement was never heard on the radio, which begs the obvious question. Why did the conductor think the signal was green and not red? While that question still remains a mystery, I personally think there was a possible explanation to this. The conductor possibly encountered a phantom signal. A phantom signal it's a sun glare that can create false reading to anyone, including the train crew. Sadly, that was the case of what happened at Lab Book Grove back in 1999. A topic may be saved for another time. But what you guys think? Do you think the Metrolink engineer possibly encountered a phantom signal? Let me know in the comments. The train departs the station at 4.16 p.m. Because the UP train was still occupying a single track, 111 will have to come to a stop to allow the UP train to pass before the Metrolink train can continue on westbound. However, this didn't happen. At 4.21 and 3 seconds, Sanchez receives a text message. It was one of the rail fans, or rail fan A again, and replies back to that rail fan at 4.22 and 1 second. And around this time, the train passed the red signal. Engineer Sanchez had no idea what he had done. He had no idea that he made a fatal error. He had no idea that a collision was on the rise. The UP local train was just emerging from Tunnel 28 
when he spots a triangle of lights directly ahead of him on his own track. The engineer immediately slams on the emergency brakes. However, Engineer Sanchez did not apply the emergency brakes. Now there are two possible reasons on why Engineer Sanchez did not slam on the emergency brakes. One, he was either still looking at his cell phone waiting for a text message, or two, he was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. That possibly led him to a diabetic shock that prevented him from pulling the emergency brakes. Now before I move on, there is something I need to say. This 911 call after the accident was just nothing more but chilling. If you wish to skip that part, a time stop will be provided, but moving on. Shortly after both trains came into view, it was already too late. Uh, yes, um, I'm on the Metrolink train. We just left uh, North Ridge, I mean, Casper Station, heading towards the TV. We had a collision with something. We have a whole bunch of people who are now bleeding and on the floor. Is that train? It's the Metrolink train. Okay, can you give me uh, an intersection or some, something close to... Uh... Well, we're almost at the, uh, at the first tunnel going into, into towards Simi Valley. Towards Simi Valley? Yeah, we're on that, the Metrolink train. We just left the Chatsworth station. Right, but uh, you're at the... You're we're, at he we're heading towards Simi Valley. Uh, we just collided with something. I don't know what. But I have, we have a lot of, I've got several people who are injured and bleeding. Okay, but are you in Simi Valley now? No, we're not. We are real close. We're just at the end of uh, Chatsworth, probably. Oh, we have it at Heatherly Lane in Andorra. Yeah. Okay, we have the unit already on the way. Do you know how many people are hurt? Well, I can see uh, about seven or eight people in the one car I'm in that are bleeding and uh, on the floor. Okay, sir? Yeah. All right, we have paramedics on the way, so they should be there very soon. Can okay. you tell me how many people are hurt? Well, I see one, two, three, those are probably mine. Uh, four, five, six. That's just on your car? That's just in my side of the car. Okay, how many cars are there on the uh, Metro Lake? Uh, there are three cars on this particular uh, train. Okay, back to the car. Back, okay, they're telling us to move back because it's possible, possible uh, fire on the, uh, on the other train. There's you. Okay. No, okay. But they're telling us to move back because it might be a, a uh, uh, possible explosion from the freight train. Okay, you said the back, the back car is, uh, is uh, pretty much mangled. It complete, looks like it's completely destroyed. I bet you you're going to have a lot of fatalities there. The two trains collide head-on at 4.22 and 23 seconds. The force on the impact causes the lead engines from both trains to be flipped over on their side. Metro Lake A55 telescoped backwards into the passenger car and the passenger car was ripped open. The 10 cars from the Union Pacific also derailed. The cab of UP A491 was crunched by the freight cars with the brakeman still trapped inside, the sounds of crunchy metal and the victim screaming filled the air. To make matters worse, the fuel tanks from A55 and A485 were erupted and caught fire, spreading flames near the derailed passenger car, Metrolink Link A55, and UP A485, with the engineer and conductor still trapped inside, desperately trying to escape by banging on the windows. Hundreds of firefighters, police officers, and heavy search and rescue units arrived at the scene. A member from the NTSB also rushed to help out. All three crew members from the UP were eventually rescued by the firefighters. Rescuers worked throughout the day until the last victim was finally free. 
and the last body was found. Two firefighters received medals for risking their lives to enter space with smoky and potential toxic air without their air masks and bottles to rescue the UP train crew. Two police officers received medals and two more received accommodations and were credited to save the lives of several injured passengers. In the end, 23 people died instantly, including Engineer Sanchez. Two more later died in the hospital, rising the death toll up to 25. One of three police officers was among the dead. One of the passengers who died was a survivor from the 2005 Glendale train collision. A story best saved for another day. 135 more were injured. 85 were serious. This event was the deadliest accident in Metro Lake's history and one of the worst in the United States since the Big Bayou wreck of 1993. When it was all said and done, the National Transportation Safety Board pointed the blame squarely at Engineer Sanchez. His negligence and his distractions allowed him to pass the red signal, not paying any attention for what's ahead, before crashing into the UP train. Now before I end this video, there are a few topics I need to discuss. Number one, I still find this texting while driving train crash absolutely unacceptable. You have an engineer carrying over 200 people on board texting while at the controls. That's a massive red flag. Number two, when it comes to train disasters that are unbelievable, this one probably takes the cake. When I first watched that collision on Thunderbolts' video, I was personally stunned and shocked to find out what was the cause of this accident. And last but not least, shockingly, the Metrolink engineer was not the only one who was texting while on duty that day. The NTSB revealed that the conductor of the UP was also texting while on duty. Phone records indicate that the conductor sent or received a total of 41 text messages while on duty between 11.30 a.m. and 4.20 p.m. A crew member should have told the conductor to turn off his cell phone while they were on duty as a rule requirement. All three locomotives were deemed damaged beyond repaired and scrapped. Metrolink A55 became the first and only Metrolink F59PH to be scrapped after the wreck. It's been 15 years since that collision occurred, and to this day, the Chatsworth collision remains the worst wreck in Metrolink's history, and it's an accident that will never be forgotten. Thank you.